Iceland might not be the largest island in the world, but in the fight to cut carbon emissions, this unlikely environmental champion is punching well above its weight. Its unique volcanic geology doesn't just create breathtaking scenery, but has enabled 100% of its electricity to be generated by renewable sources, much of which is geothermal. Iceland is the only country in the world to have achieved this. I'm here at the edge of the Arctic Circle where scientists are combining geothermal activity with a new technology to try and help Iceland become carbon neutral for good. So this is Kjot and Kunst. Uh, it's a very famous restaurant in these parts. They apparently they cook on geothermal energy and I've been told the kitchen's round the back. Wow, it's like, maybe everything's gonna taste like egg. I don't know. I can, uh, there he is. Here he is, this is our guy. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi is it Oli? Hi, how are you? Welcome to Iceland. Uh, thank Welcome you so much. Thank you, thank you. All this steam that we're seeing here, yeah. you're not boiling water. This is steam that's coming yeah, from it's coming, the earth. Yeah, it's coming from the earth freely. Right. And this area... So you've got a hole under here that goes straight down into the ground. Yeah, we, we are lucky. Uh, we are warm up the building with this heat power and the water in the sinks and everything. And now we take one more step in the direction for the use of the green power. We have learned to make uh, food with it. Does that mean everything that you cook tastes like eggs? <laughs> no, it's not true. <laughs> the smell of eggs stems from the sulfur underground released with the steam. You have to be a little bit wild in the wild nature, huh? It's delicious. It's good. Iceland, once oil dependent, started to use renewables after being hit by the oil crisis of the 1970s, and it hasn't looked back. So we just have to open this here. It's very simple, manual. We open this like this, and now we are giving 170 Celsius steam coming in here in this pipe and in between here, and now it starts boiling already. Oh, wow. 10 or 15 seconds to boil. I mean, that's fantastic. Obviously, yeah. as a business, that is free energy. You've yeah. got to be loving that. Yeah. I mean, do you think about the environmental impact of your business? Like... Afterwards, I thought about it. Uh, not in the beginning. Yeah. The purse was talking in the beginning. But afterwards, you think about it, maybe you're doing some good thing. Maybe you're helping out to, to save the world a little bit and save the planet, you know? And maybe there's a lesson in that yeah, as well. Maybe, maybe it, it doesn't really matter what yeah. that motivation is. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, if yeah. it's an environmental win, exactly. then that's an environmental win yeah. for all of yeah. us. You have to think so big. Not be afraid with it. You have to think so big. Yeah. Geothermal activity underground is also being used on a larger scale. This volcanic island of basaltic rock is powering geothermal energy plants all over the country. With the capacity to supply all of the country's domestic electricity, Hedlisedi Geothermal Power Plant is Iceland's largest facility. Okay, so we're, we're looking for Berker Sigfusson. He's a geochemist with Icelandic energy. He's expecting us. This has got to be him. Hi, Viz, all the way. Hi. Hi. Berker, Hi. nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Arthat and goggles. Arthat, goggles. Holy smokes, look at that! That's the sound of energy being created, right? I yeah. mean, it's, it's great. So on any other kind of power station, whether it was nuclear or coal or gas... Yeah, they would need some fuel yeah. to heat up the water to produce the steam. Yeah. Here we just take the steam directly from the ground. Directly from the ground? Yeah. By adding geothermal to their already advanced hydro capacity, Iceland became world leaders in renewable energy. Basic question, how does a geothermal plant work? In very short, we drill a hole into the ground and we drill down to maybe two to three kilometers and there the steam is overpressurized and it comes by its own pressure through the production wells. And we collect the steam at the surface and there you produce power. Mm. Just like that? Just like that. Right. There will be enough heat in the crust for millions of years to come. Mm. We are only using tiny fraction Mm. of the heat that is being generated in the earth mm. every day. The potential of this heat is so big that plans have been discussed for helping to supply the UK with geothermal energy from Iceland.
It might be fully renewable, but there is a downside. In the process of accessing the steam, naturally occurring gases like carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide are also brought to the surface. Woo! It's absolutely wild, isn't it? I mean, I've never seen any kind of power station like this before. And of course, when you're comparing it to more conventional kind of coal or gas power stations, the emissions are absolutely minimal. But there are emissions. So we're going to go and meet another geoscientist here. And he's going to talk to us about a really exciting new aspect to the project called CarbFix. Uh, woo. <laughs> Ingvi Gunnarsson is a geochemist with CarbFix. It's brutal. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely this brutal. is how it is. Uh, nice oh, to yeah. meet you. Hey, thanks. Let's so, get so, inside. This is yes, absolutely we, we Oh my gosh. Any pollutants emitted from the plant are captured and sealed underground in the form of rock. Well, Ingvi, can you tell us about CarbFix? What is CarbFix? CarbFix involves capturing the CO2 from the power plant and re-injecting it back into the ground. We wanted to do our part in trying to solve this problem of the increased concentration of CO2 in atmosphere. We don't want to get stuck here. <laughs> wow, okay, this, this is great. Okay. I mean, it really feels like another planet up here. Yeah. This is fantastic. The gas emissions are transported from the main energy plant via pipes to these geometric pods where they are re-injected into the ground. Oh, nice to get out of that weather sometimes. Man, it's freezing out there. That's nice. This one is nice and warm, yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, uh, there you go. So what are we doing in this wonderful little metal igloo? This is uh, what we call a re-injection well. Basically, what comes from a power plant, once we have produced electricity, hot water and gas. And we need to dispose of that somehow. If we would not be capturing it, it would be released to atmosphere. Okay, okay. okay. And contributing to climate change. Yeah, it would. Okay. Definitely. Reinjecting the waste products of water and gas into the ground enables the carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide to permeate the volcanic or basaltic rock and transform into stone. Okay. And we have an example of that here, a beautiful example of that. Water flows through the rock, fixing the CO2. In these rocks, you have these cavities, and these pores are filled up with uh, carbon minerals. You're turning air pollution into rock? Yeah. The CarbFix project replicates the natural process of weathering, but instead of taking hundreds or thousands of years to turn into stone, CarbFix achieves it in just six months. To show me how successful the project is, we first have to brave the weather again to take a sample of the gases which we condense into liquid. This is a really a, a vital part in our project to demonstrate that the CO2 is being mineralized in the ground. I think we, we, should, just, we should just close it now. Yeah, great. It's getting, getting very good. You can feel the heat of that condensed steam. Woo! The plan now is that we take this back to the lab and we have to have it analyzed for CO2 and H2S. Okay. Yeah. Back in the lab, the sample is ready for analysis. If the re-injected gases have successfully turned into stone, then the sample should only contain the naturally occurring background levels, carbon dioxide and H2S, or hydrogen sulfide. OK, here we measure the CO2 and the, and the H2S. This is a small sample of the steam that we collected. And we turn it on. So what are you hoping to see here? Because obviously there is a background level of CO2 already. Yeah. What we are hoping to yeah. see is that, that the CO2 levels in the steam does not rise above the background levels. Okay. okay. Here is the concentration of CO2 in the sample, and here is the concentration of hydrogen sulfide in the sample, which is about the same levels as the background levels. Okay. okay. The gases have turned to, to stones, to rocks. For me, this is a very cool approach to, to, uh, to lowering the gas emissions. This isn't necessarily locked to geothermal energy, is it? As long as you have a, a relatively pure stream of CO2, which you can capture, dissolve in water, then you can take that water and re-inject it back into the ground, as long as you have favorable rock composition in your area. 
approximately 5% of the continents on Earth is basalt. And then you have the oceanic ridges, which is all basalt. My feeling is that more people should do that. More companies should do that. More industries should do that. The potential is there.